You've made a pattern to a tapered pair of pants where it's wider and it goes down narrower, or maybe you have a skirt that's more of that va va boom shape and it goes down to a tapered hem. So you've continued the line, you've drafted this, you've continued the line into the hem, you've added that extra hem allowance so that you have enough room to fold it up, but then it's not working. For whatever reason, when you go to hem it, it like draws in in this weird way and it's just not working. Has this ever happened to you? In this way, when you're doing a hem on a tapered garment, things are a little different, but it's a super easy way to get it just right. Let me show you. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Trisha, your pattern nerd friend. I am the owner of Creative Costume Academy. We are here to share tips and tricks with you that will take this mystery and the I can't do this out of learning pattern making and make it more fun and exciting stuff that you can use right away. Today we're talking about tapered hems. You can see this on say a tapered pair of pants, trousers that taper down from a wider leg to a narrower leg. You would see it on those more fitted skirts where you're coming from the wide part of the hip and you go in towards the leg instead of coming straight down like a straight skirt. Or you also see it sometimes on sleeves jacket sleeve hems or even short sleeve hems where it's slightly narrower at the hem. That's the key, right? Narrower at the hem than it is at the body of wherever this hem is, whether it be a pant leg, a skirt, or a sleeve. I learned this long ago <laughs> at towards the beginning of my pattern journey. If you just continue that line, what happens is you're continuing that line. So let's say we're doing a skirt because it's an easy visual reference. We have the hips and then we come down and we come down towards this. Well, if you continue the hem coming down further, I mean, eventually the points would intersect. What I'm saying is if you just draw the hem longer, then the hem will continue to angle in. So when you flip that hem up, you're flipping it up. The bottom of that hem is now going into a bigger, a wider part of your pattern. Maybe you think, okay, I know this. So where I want to add my hem, instead of continuing that line and angling it in, maybe I'll go straight and that will help with the problem. Depending on the angle of where you're adding the hem, this could solve the problem. It could help at least a lot more than just continuing that line. But there is a way to make it work exactly. So that's what I want to show you. Super easy. After I show you, you're probably going to be like, what? Why didn't I think about that? Which is my favorite part about sharing these little tips with you. <laughs> so let's not waste any more time. Let's go over to the table and let me show you this quick and easy trick to make the, your life so much easier. If we take a look at this pant pattern, and this is a half scale pant pattern, we just are looking at the hem here and there is a slightly tapered leg. Let's just try so you can visually see what I was telling you about. Let's try what happens when we continue that hemline. So if we are to continue the hemline as it is, and let's say, there's an inch and a half hem. So I'm going to do an inch and a half. When I go to check my hem, I'll just fold it with the paper and maybe you can see, here we go. It's maybe hard for you to see, but I'll draw in where that hem is sitting on the inside of this tapered leg. And you're going to see, See how the bottom of the hem is sitting slightly inside of where the inseam is. So when you go to stitch this, if you're going to stitch this hem, it's going to want to pull that side seam in and it causes the whole thing to bunch up. We don't want that. So if you were to go straight, I think with this level of angle that we have here, that would be better, but to have it sit exactly in the right spot. This is all you have to do. So usually I determine how much of a hem I want and go ahead and draw that line as we've already got it drawn in here. 
Then you'll do as I just did where I checked the previous one where we continued that angle using your handy dandy needle wheel, which I do highly suggest that you use while the hem allowance is folded up. You can use your needle wheel and trace along the outseam and the inseam of the pant leg. And then when you open it up, you're going to see exactly the same shape of that leg. So when this hem gets folded up into it, it's going to exactly align with the shape of where that top of the hem is going into. Another way that you can think about this is if you know for sure, you've already trued your pattern up and everything, you know for sure this is where your hem's gonna be, Sometimes I just go ahead and cut that hem off. And then I'm assuming I already have the seam allowance I need on this pattern as well. But I would fold up my hem and to be extra speedy, you can go ahead and just cut along your cut line along the edge of the pattern. So you don't even have to use the needle wheel and trace it in. And then you open it up and there is your hem that's going to sit exactly flush inside of your pant leg so it's not going to draw in those sides and cause it to gather and you can see the difference of where that blue line was when we continued that angle and where it now lines up with the shape of our pant. I want to show you one more example using a sleeve and I talked about a few minutes ago about using your skirt like if you have a skirt shape that comes in towards the legs as opposed to going straight. I don't have a half scale version of that, but it's the same basic principle and I'll show you again here on the sleeve. So we have a sleeve hem, that's all we're really talking about right now. So let's go ahead and draw that in. So, and again, we'll continue that angle you know, the underarm seam of our sleeve. Let's put that same inch and a half hem on. And we will test it to see what happens and where that lines up when we fold our hem up. I'll go ahead and draw in, since I'm having trouble seeing it, you probably can't see it either. But this is where the top of that hem is lining up once that hem is folded up. And you can see again, we have that same thing happening. So if you were to stitch this hem, then that would be drawing in your underarm seams. And that's not what you want. It would not give you the best look. So again, we'll do the cutting method because honestly, this is what I do most of the time because it's just quick and easy. And you know, I'm all about having fun and being quick and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut off that inch and a half where I want it. Again, assuming I have the seam allowance that I need along this whole pattern. And then you would cut along your cut line while the hem is folded up. So I'm gonna do that quickly. And there we go. So now the outer edge of this paper is exactly the right shape to fit into this tapered sleeve that I have here. You can see the difference now much more clearly as opposed to us just continuing that line down. And then when I flip it up, you can see from the back that it, it matches up and it lines right up with exactly where I need it to. So it's not gonna be pulling and distorting the hem of this garment. Now, when you go to sew this, when you put one on top of the other, you are going to sew where your seam allowance is, and then you would change, you know, let's say this is half of an inch, and then you have half of an inch going this way. So there is a slight pivot to make sure that even when these are seamed, they're still gonna line up in the same way. Well, I hope that makes a whole lot of sense, and really, you can see how simple it really can be, and it will help you when you're adding hems to those tapered legs, skirts, sleeves that you have in the future. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit those notifications so that you never miss out on any of the new tricky 
Thursdays that come out. If you are ready to learn more, now I share little tips and tricks here, but if you really wanna dive, you really wanna learn the pattern making magic, we do have Pattern Making Academy where I've partnered up with the amazing Mimi G Style. She and her husband Norris design all of the pattern garments that we make in there, this dress being one of them, one of my favorite designs, and I am the lead instructor. You can learn more about that down below at learnpatternmaking.com. We start at the basics and we learn about fitting and then we go dive into different wonderful designs every month. It's a really great program. For those of you wanting to learn about pattern making but not wanting to commit to a big full-time fashion institution. And if you're still not sure, you're still kind of learning about me and you wanna try it out, I do have the free pattern masterclass where you can learn a little bit more about my backstory and you learn the very first principle in that workshop and you can start using it immediately to make hundreds of designs. It's really awesome. You can check it out, see if my teaching is for you. We have that link below for the free pattern masterclass. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.